But getting back to the seniors, we take advantage of the cultural center, which has movies every Friday morning. We want to hear that. We get captions, but it's so damn cold. We're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to chill that place. As few people came in saying, I wore my coat and my glove, and I saw some elderly ladies wearing gloves. It is so cold in the cultural center. Auditorium, that's not a, that's as well as people's uh, uh, building up on the top floor and the uh, uh, auditorium on the small floor. But I might talk to your uh, attorney's office uh, or the state's attorney or they're talking about captions. The American Disabilities Act says med public meetings of more than 20 should have captions. Now, if you go to a movie and you're sitting there and it's 55 degrees in the cultural center, if you're wearing a sweater, if you don't, you're freezing. Uh, you're seeing captions because it's a senior program. But other parts of the auditorium, if we bring somebody in, and I know the, uh, the library's not under your jurisdiction, I don't think. Thank you. I'm going to point out we had some international drivers come in. We had 600 people in the uh, auditorium and they couldn't understand what they're saying. It's especially true where people are speaking and English is not their primary language. We need captions and a comfortable place. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. Next up is Adrian Alexander from AFSCME. Adrian Alexander from AFSCME. Hi, good evening. I'm Adrian Alexander, legislative and policy specialist with AFSCME Council 31, and we represent nearly 5,000 Cook County employees. We're concerned about President Preckwinkle's plan to continue to forego revenue and roll back the remaining quarter percent of the sales tax, despite a projected budget shortfall of $267.5 million. This decision will undoubtedly lead to unnecessary layoffs that will be devastating for the affected employees, their families, and the communities that depend on them to provide an array of public services. Not only is the president rolling back the sales tax, the property tax levy continues to remain flat, not even being adjusted for natural growth, meaning the county has sacrificed millions in potential revenue. We recognize a portion of this deficit is due to an imbalance in the patient mix of the hospital system and increasing numbers of patients without an ability to pay. As such, AFSCME has committed to doing all we can at the national level in order to help CCHHS obtain the 1115 waiver and ease some of the fiscal burden facing the system. In the past few years, the county has continually decreased its subsidy to the hospital, health and hospital system while the health system has struggled to treat a growing number of uninsured. We urge the county to continue to support the health and hospital system at the present level so that CCHHS will be able to compete once all of the provisions of the Affordable Care Act are enacted in 2014. While the preliminary budget doesn't detail where the cuts um, necessary to close the projected deficit will come from, the union is concerned about how the county will continue to provide much needed services while facing cuts year after year. We ask that as we go through this budget process, you pay special attention to preserving frontline employees that serve the citizens of Cook County. The president and the board have the power to prevent the devastation that will result from intentionally decreasing revenue and forcing cuts, and I strongly urge you to do so. Thank you. Thank you very much. Family? Brian Jordan. Brian Jordan. Good evening. My name is Brian Jordan, and I am president of the Illinois Food Retailers Association. Our membership is comprised of over 500 independent grocers and their wholesaler suppliers, and um, they operate over 1,000 stores throughout the state of Illinois and over 250 in the Cook County area. Um, I would just like to address one issue of the budget, and that is regarding the uh, planned uh, rollback of the last quarter percent um, that was set in place two years ago. My, my first remarks would be I would like to thank this board for the action that you took back in 2009 to partially roll back that uh, sales tax increase that was passed in 2008. This action was certainly a step in the right direction to level the playing field for retailers operating in Cook County. And more importantly, it benefited the shoppers who at the time were paying in excess of 2% more in sales tax 
on non-food and medicine items than shoppers in other counties of the state. It was the right thing to do back in 2009, and continuation of the rollback is the right thing to do for the 2013 budget. We urge you to please maintain the planned one quarter percent sales tax reduction beginning in January of 2013. Even with this rollback, Cook County residents will still be paying approximately 1% more in sales tax on non-food and medicine items than the residents in nearby border counties. During these tough recessionary times with so many people unemployed, every penny counts. Inner city residents who cannot afford to travel outside the county to shop are impacted the most. The higher sales tax rate discourages people from shopping in Cook County, especially for residents who live along the border counties. So we urge you to please keep shoppers in Cook County and to continue to level the playing field for businesses, especially at a time when many municipalities are looking for stores in underserved areas in order to revitalize the community. By incorporating the one, the one, per, one quarter percent rollback in the 2013 budget, that will certainly help. As an example of the effect of the competitive disadvantage due to the tax disparity, a retailer may compete with another retailer in the same municipality or a neighboring municipality, but the competitor is outside Cook County. The typical net profit for a grocery store, and that's the overall sales, is historically 2%. Now, if a retailer wants to compete on the final price with a competitor outside of, of Cook County, it doesn't give them much room, much room for a net profit. Reducing the tax as planned will help reduce this disparity. This occurs again and again along the, county, the, along the counties that border Cook County. The good news is that the anticipated 2012 year-end sales tax revenue is greater than expected, which is indicative of two things, that the economy is very slowly turning around and the rollback is definitely helping to keep Cook County shoppers shopping in Cook County. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, sir. Next up is George Lakemore. Good afternoon to the citizens of Cook County and to staff and to President Fred Wick. I did get a chance to look over this budget, and we are at an uh, economic crisis here in Cook County, in the city, in the state of Illinois, and in the nation. And we have priorities. And I am defining myself as a concerned citizen of Cook County, a black concerned citizen. The great percentage of, of slave people who was enslaved in America. Now, we have a health and hospital system. We have a sheriff department. We have a juvenile detention center. We have many departments in county government. I have advocated on deaf ears to some uh, county officials. And I Constantly, I'm constantly bringing up this particular issue, the negative effect of undocumented, illegal citizens that held on the health and hospital system and on Cook County and how our leadership is silent on this. And they have made the city of Chicago a sanctuary city. They have made Cook County a sanctuary county, encouraging people that are not documented legally in this country to come here. And when you set up a budget, you have to feed, clothe, shelter, educate, and health care, and the criminal justice system the safety of our citizens are at risk with continually 
encouraging this policy. And sometimes I believe, this I believe, that it's because of the political system encouraging this, where they can continuously be voting in office. I'm concerned about the impact unemployment in the black community is extremely high. Health issues and our people are at risk. And when they go to a county facility, they have to stand in line and wait and wait and wait for service. Not enough staff. Not enough money. Not enough nurses. It is a price that Cook County pays for letting these undocumented illegals into this county using these resources. Now, you can be sour and ignore this, but you are paying, and the black community is playing, paying by not getting these jobs, not getting good health care, competing with someone that don't belong here. Now, you're supposed to be law-abiding citizens, and we have a constitution, and we have an immigration department, and we have borders. And these policies should be national. Federal policy should be enforced. The county should not ignore these policies at the expense of their citizens. So again, I'm advocating that you do a study on the negative impact that illegals have on the health and hospital system, the criminal justice system, and also the last thing that I would like to bring up for a part of, of your budget, because you're going to have to pay too. When you have a capital budget that's dealing with goods and services, and bidding Mr. Blankmore will be scholar and finish in a few moments. I saw how tolerant he was to other speakers, so I will be seated. I would like for uh, you to advocate. Do not advocate for MBEs, WBEs, DBE. Advocate that the terminology will be changed when it comes to capital and contracts and goods and services set aside specifically for black people with the affirmative action was original intent was for to make the injured ex slaves get their fair share. We didn't get our 40 acres and a mule. Surely we want to get a contract. And we don't want other groups to come in, white women, Asian, and, and, and uh, white men come in under these terminologies. We want this to change. Thank you all and all of you have a peaceful and blessed day. And it is an impact on this budget when you are continuously letting illegals come in and use counter resources. May God bless you. I stood up and I spoke out. I'm going to be seated and I know that the ancestors will appreciate what I said if you don't. And I'm sure they're saying amen and amen and amen. And thank all of you. All positions. Mr. Blakemore? Carlotta uh, Kelly. Carlotta Kelly? I don't know. Let me see what I can say. Hi, Commissioners. My name is Carlotta Kelly. I'm here representing Chatham Business Association. I'll be short and sweet. Um, on behalf of Chatham Business Association, Small Business Development, Inc., I would like to offer our continued support for repealing the 1% sales tax as proposed in the Cook County President, Tony Prairie-Weeble's first budget, as passed in February 2011. CBA is an organization formed 40 years ago to ensure the social, political, and economic growth within Chatham and its surrounding communities. We understand that there may be some concerns due to the large projected budget deficit not to go through with reducing the sales tax increase. However, the sales tax increase is deemed burdensome to small businesses. The repeal of the sales tax is the first step of many signals to investors and entrepreneurs that Cook County is open for business and that our investment will create jobs for the future.
Chatham Business Association is ready to work with the city, the county, state leaders to work on initiatives that help revitalize the area's business climate. So thank you. Thank you very much. Mark Gordon. Mark Gordon. President for ASME Local 3696. I come to speak to you on behalf of the support staff on the judicial system and as well as the public defender's office. I am aware that a lot of business owners are in favor of you rolling back the sales tax, but I am one who is opposed to any more sales tax being rolled back. The problem is this, once the county gives back money, the city or the state, takes that money and they increase and we the citizens in Chicago and Cook County at the end of the day still wind up paying higher in sales tax. And the sales tax has brought extra revenue into the county to withstand vital services. Last year the Public Defender's Office took a hit with laying off approximately 18 support staff. What that did for our office is this, the, the remaining support staff became heavy taxed we're trying to keep up with the services that was provided with the fully functioning staff of support staff members. In some instances, management also had to pick, pitch in to help the support staff maintain to keep the office function. As you all are aware, the Public Defender's Office is not in any control of the clients that comes through the office. As the crime 
rates increases, more services from our office is needed to be provided, and also for our office to protect our clients' constitutional rights. So I'm asking, I am one also that was laid off, unfortunately recalled back, but we still have approximately 11 of our support staff who are still uh, hoping and waiting to get their job back. I'm asking that you will really look into the budget of the Public Defender's Office and properly fund the Public Defender's Office budget so that our office can withstand the staff that are currently working and also bring back the remaining staff members that is really needed to fulfill an effective, efficient job in a public defender's office. As I look at the proposed estimate budget, there are other departments our office that our local represent, adult probation, forensic clinical service, social service, juvenile court, and probation, JTDC. I noticed there are some cuts in there. There are attentive cuts in their budget. I'm not sure what these cuts mean, but what I am asking is that you will please, please consider the services that the support staff provide for these agencies that are vital, that plays a major role with helping Cook County run effective and efficiently, and do not, again, please do not lay off any more of our staff. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cannon. Tanya Trish. Tanya Trish. Good evening, President Kecklinkel, Good evening. department leaders, staff, Commissioner Daly. My name is Tanya Trish, and I'm counsel with the Illinois Retail Merchants Association. Irma's members own over 20,000 retail locations in Illinois. With a large portion of members in Cook County, our membership wanted to make sure that we were on the record as supporting President Kecklinkel's effort to implement the final rollback of the sales tax. Reducing the tax burden is a win for both the residents and businesses in Cook County. We understand that rolling back the sales tax while dealing with a budget deficit is not an easy decision to make. But it takes a real leader with a vision for economic growth to make this kind of investment on behalf of taxpayers in this county. We all know how much the sales tax means to the county's budget. The revenue stream is essential to providing much needed county services. Lowering the sales tax and making the county more competitive with neighboring counties will encourage shoppers to stay right here to make their purchases, keeping those sales tax dollars in Cook County. As business owners, we have no problem competing on price, product mix, and customer service. But especially in an economy like we've had for the past few years, it becomes difficult to compete when you lose your customers to neighboring counties because their taxes are lower. You'd be hard-pressed to find any other local jurisdiction that, in the face of a tough budget, are lowering taxes. And as our members prepare for what we hope will be a brisk back-to-school season, parents should consider that for the last three years, under the leadership of President Preckwinkle and the support of members of the board, Cook County has done its part to encourage them to shop close to home. I should also note that the retail industry employs approximately one in five residents in the state. We are a major contributor to jobs at all levels. Our industry is often where teens come with no experience to learn important job and life skills. We are a significant source for part-time jobs for adults looking to earn extra income in the evenings and on weekends. And we also employ people full-time who are looking to make retail their career. Our store managers and area managers can attest to the benefits and opportunities of working in retail. Lowering the sales tax and encouraging people to shop in our stores helps to protect these jobs and the jobs of the many residents of Cook County who work in retail. The members of Irma applaud the efforts of President Tony Preckwinkle to roll back the sales tax an additional quarter percent. We believe that it will bring relief to the residents and to the retailers of Cook County and that the increased revenue will help fund much needed county services. We appreciate your support and the support we see, we receive from the Cook County Board of Commissioners. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Trish. Steve Kaskarski. Point of order, Madam Chairman. Could we turn off these noisy machines so we can hear what's being said? Um, <clears throat> I apologize that you can't hear better. Um, you know, actually, the speakers are in the back of the room, um, and if you 
wish uh, we can find a seat for you right in the back by the speakers. Sir? Hi, my name is Steve Kaspersky. Um, I'm a Cook County Juvenile Probation Officer. I'm also a licensed clinical social worker. I'm a member of AFSCME Local 3477. And I, I come today, and I'm, and I'm one of um, 13 juvenile probation officers hired over the past seven years. I think when, first of all, I would like to thank the president and some of the commissioners that have found their way out to juvenile probation over the past year to see some of the work we do. Um, and one thing I hope that they notice is that when I, I've been a probation officer for four years, and when I got there, um, probation was taking on uh, new strategies to deal with a really complex problem of adolescent delinquency. We start using um, better assessment tools to identify the high risk versus low risk so we can utilize our resources more efficiently. Um, we, we know that a lot of the kids who come through our system have untreated mental health issues. And those 13 new pre probation officers hired over the past seven years, all of us but one have a, uh, mental health backgrounds. Because we know that um, untreated mental health issues often um, result in delinquent behavior or attributed to, or attributed to delinquent behavior. I was one of, um, one of those probation officers um, that got a notice during the last budget crisis. And I thought I would use that opportunity to do what I do. Um, I enjoy my work. I think that when you look at what research shows us is, is that when you want behavioral change from people, one of the um, most important factors is the relationship that that person has with the worker. And I think juvenile probation, I am one of many that are really committed to understanding our kids, trying to make, um, trying to assist them as they struggle in a very difficult world they live in. Most of the kids I work with, it's nothing for them to, keep, to tell me um, uh, the loss of life that, that surrounds them, the lack of resources, and the inability to access things that could help them start striving and thriving. And um, I thank the commission and um, for the support in the past, and I, um, I guess I'm here to let you know the value that um, this part of the budget provides to the young people in our community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Brian Irvin Nixiowski. Brian, is that right, Brian? Brian Irvin um, Thank you, my name is Brian Irvin and I'm here representing Respiratory Health Association of Metropolitan Chicago. We're a uh, lung health charity uh, based here in Cook County, founded in 1906. And I wanted to first thank the county and the board for all they've been doing to preserve lung health over the I'm last sorry, several sir, years. Could you, could you repeat the organization that you're affiliated with? Respiratory Health Association. The Respiratory Health Association. Of Metropolitan Chicago. It's a long one. Uh, we're based here in Cook County. We were founded in 1906. Um, we wanted to thank the county for everything they've been doing over the last several years to preserve lung health and to urge you to continue actions and activities that reduce lung disease and the impact lung disease on county residents. The county was the first county in the country to adopt a clean diesel construction ordinance. And enforcement of that ordinance will ensure county-funded construction projects will use cleaner diesel fuels and cleaner diesel equipment that produces less dangerous diesel soot pollution. The county has also made tremendous strides in promoting smoking cessation options and incorporating chronic disease training, especially for people using county medical facilities. Over 450,000 people in Cook County have asthma, and education help keep asthma under control and keep people with asthma out of the hospital, improving well-being while saving taxpayer dollars. Likewise, COPD, or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, is now the third leading cause of death in America, and the county's efforts to help people manage this disease can keep people happy and productive for many additional years, while again, also saving on medical expenses. The 
county has also been a leader in expanding tobacco taxes beyond cigarettes. Earlier this year, the county began taxing other tobacco products in addition to cigarettes, closing a loophole while generating needed revenue. This action evens the playing field and encourages quitting by dissuading people from simply switching from smoking cigarettes to other tobacco products. Likewise, the enhanced enforcement of tobacco tax payments has brought in more than a million dollars in additional funds to county coffers. This also discourages future non-compliance in tobacco sales and helps further reduce youth smoking rates by ensuring that some tobacco products are not artificially cheaper and more attractive to youth. Any investment made in helping a person quit smoking or a youth we can prevent from starting smoking will help contain the exorbitant and growing costs of health care moving forward, making Cook County a safer, healthier, more effective, and productive place to live in coming years. The county faces a challenging environment in terms of its fiscal future in the coming year, but continuing these actions above will, will bring long-term fiscal benefits and public health benefits to the county. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Would you introduce yourself as you come to the microphone? Yes, yes. My name is uh, G. Douglas Van Duan. This is Mr. Mahmoud, and this is Joanne Tunney. Okay. Hello, Madam President, Commissioner Daly, and others. Uh, we are mental health specialist seniors from CIRMAC Health Services. As I said a moment ago, my name is uh, G. Douglas Van Duan. This is Mr. Mahmoud and Mrs. Tunney. Um, I have been at CIRMAC for 12 years, Mr. Mahmoud for 18 years, and Mrs. Tunney for 23 years. We represent the 34 jobs your body saved last year. And again, thanks for your continued support. We are here to provide a brief update of our current circumstances and request that we are grandfathered into our current positions, as allowed by the state of Illinois. We also ask that if necessary, that securing a CADC and or NCCHC certification be accepted as a reasonable attempt to meet Dr. Puisi's wish list and unreasonable demands. Now, uh, Ms. Tunney will give a brief overview. Hello. I would just like to um, inform you of our status right now at CERMAC. At this time, 33 of the 34 mental health specialists have applied to a graduate program. Um, however, Due to the competitiveness and the limited amount of seats in these programs, not all of us are going to be accepted. At this time, many of us have been informed that we need to repeat some of our undergraduate work because we've been out of school for too long. Dr. Puistas is stating that if we are not in a program as of August, our positions will be terminated. Um, at this point, the NCCHC does not require that the, um, that we be licensed mental health specialists. According, um, um, according to the DOJ monitor's latest fifth monitoring report, states that the monitor found the following provisions assess that states that qualified mental health staff are able to provide service, services at CERMAC Health Services. The definition of a qualified mental health staff is an individual with a minimum of a bachelor's degree and two years of experience in provision of mental health services, and who has received special instruction and on-site clinical supervision from qualified mental health professional, which is what all of us are. We are all considered qualified mental health staff. We all have at least a bachelor's degree, and many of us have a master's. Um, as of June 5th, we were told to sign a policy titled Intake Mental Health Screening and Referral, which indicates that, once again, qualified mental health staff are able to provide services at CIRMAC. On page four of this policy, the COO of CIRMAC Health Services, Dr. Puises, signed approval of that policy. And so far, this policy is a clear contradiction of Dr. Puises' scheme of obtaining an all-licensed staff. Um, at this point, if you were to have an all-licensed mental health staff, mental health specialist three staff, that would increase the budget to 1.62 million a year. Um, and that's not necessary. It's not, it's not by the law, and it's just not, it's not needed. There's one more thing that we would like
like to mention is that uh, there was speak of a cold board with Chicago State, uh, but we spoke with the advisors at Chicago State, and they explained to us, despite what was uh, indicated by our director of mental health, that uh, no cohort was set up uh, because of proceeds for that would have to be provided up front. So that's not an option for us either at this time. Also, by obtaining a, a license, it's going to cost each employee at least $21,000. Or if you went online to complete this program, it's $40,000. On a license, that is not needed. We are all qualified, have been qualified for 25 years to do this job. So that's, what, that's why we're here today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, all three of you. Mr. Bandwan, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mamu, and Ms. Sunny. Yes. Next up is a big dot. Could you say it again, please? A big dot. A big dot. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak this evening. My name is Michael Meany. I'm the Government Relations Director at the Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce. And on behalf of the Chamber and our 1,600 business members throughout the county, we want to thank President Preckwinkle and the County Board of Commissioners for working hard over the last two years to move Cook County forward. By all accounts, Cook County government is viewed in a more favorable light today due to the tough decisions that you've made to implement reforms reduce waste and streamline and consolidate public services. We urge you to continue to explore ways to achieve even greater efficiencies to close the 2013 shortfall. January 1, 2013 is a date that Cook County businesses and consumers have had circled on their calendar for a year. That, of course, is the date that the remaining quarter percent of the 2008 sales tax increase will be completely eliminated. The sales tax phase out is a critical component to fostering economic recovery in Cook County and enhancing our businesses' chances for success by making us more competitive with neighboring counties and states. We cannot, return to, uh, we cannot afford to return to the policies of the past for a quick solution to the budget deficit. We're confident that under the leadership of President Preckwinkle and the Board of Commissioners, innovative solutions can be found to improve the county's service delivery to citizens most in need and balance the budget without raising taxes on residents or businesses. The economy is still fragile, with unemployment hovering around 10%. Many businesses and residents are still struggling to make ends meet. The best way to increase revenues for the county is to encourage private sector investment in consumer spending by reducing the sales tax to the level that it was in 2008. The business community and taxpayers are counting on the savings from the tax phase out as a way to make, help make Cook County the most business-friendly county in the region, or in the nation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Meany. I appreciate it. Although we had uh, a number of people who asked in advance of this program, uh, of this uh, hearing today, to, to speak, if there, are there any other in the audience, any others in the audience who wish to, uh, to say a few words? <coughs> All right, um, forgive me for um, my bad manners. Uh, I should have introduced all of the staff who are here today, or rather given them an opportunity to introduce themselves. First of all, I want to thank, on my right, uh, Commissioner John Daly, who's chairman of the Finance Committee, and on my left, Tarek Melhans and Andrea Gibson, who are part of our finance team. And Andrea, of course, has the responsibility for pre preparing the budget, for which we're very grateful. But if we could start with Juliana down here, if you would all stand and introduce yourselves, I'd be very grateful. Good evening, I'm Juliana Stratton, Executive Director of the Cook County Justice Advisory Council. Good evening, I'm Jim D'Amico from Facilities Management. Lisa Wallach, Director of Risk Management. Good evening, I'm Laverne Hall, I'm the Director for Contract Compliance. 
Good evening, Zara Lee, Director of Revenue. Good evening, Rachel Masoni, Interim Comptroller. Bob Ginsburg, Highway Department. And John Yonan, uh, Superintendent of the Highway Department. Maria Choka, Urban Director of Planning and Development. If you could speak up, please. Deborah, De Deborah Stone, Director of the Department of Environmental Control. Bundy Zaragoza, Superintendent, Veterans Assistance Commission. Good evening, Michael Masters, uh, Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. AC <laughs> Cunningham, Cook County Public Defender. Maureen O'Donnell, Bureau Chief Human Resources. <laughs> Andrea Gibson, Budget Director. Tonic Madlin, CFO. John Daly, Chairman of the Finance Committee. Kurt Summers in the President's Office. Neil Kari in the President's Office. John Cook, Director of Capital Planning and Policy. Matthew DeLeon, Secretary to the Board of Commissioners. Herman Brewer, Bureau of Economic Development. And then we got a bunch of other directors over here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Escape the front row. All right, speak loudly, please. Tim Bloor, Commissioner of Building and Zoning. I can't hear him. Can't. You can't hear him. OK. All right, Tim Bloor, Commissioner of Building and Zoning. Thank you. Who else do we have here? Lisa Matter, Labor Relations for Cook County. Lisa Matter, Labor Relations. Good evening. Montel Davenport, Cook County Law Library. Montel Davenport, Cook County Law Library. Dr. Donna Alexander, Administrator for Cook County Animal and Rabies Control. Dr. Donna Alexander, Cook County Animal and Rabies Control. Mary Nick Foster, Cook County Department of Human Rights, Ethics, and Human Issues. Mary Nick Foster, Cook County Department of Human Rights and Ethics. Anna Ashcroft, Director of Real Estate Management. Anna Ashcroft, Real Estate Management. Martha Martinez, Deputy Chief Administrative Officer. Martha Martinez, Deputy Chief Administrative Officer. Jerry Cray, Industrial Engineer. Jerry Cray? Cray. Cray, Cray Industrial Engineer. Andrew Shavillo, County Zoning Board of Appeals. Andy Shavillo, uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. Zoning Board of Appeals, thank you. <laughs> Angela Bailey, Office of Adoption and Child Custody Advocacy. Angela Bailey from the Office of Adoption and Child Custody Advocacy. Daryl Jackson, Medical Examiner's Office. Daryl Jackson from the Medical Examiner's Office. Welcome and thank you, Daryl. Richard Powell, Bureau of Technology. Richard Powell, Bureau of Technology and Jazz Lover. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mary Jo Horace. 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 GIS. GIS. Mary Jo Horace, GIS. All right, I think there's representatives of other commissioners here. Would you like to scan and introduce yourself? Scan and deliver here, folks. <laughs> Katie Sable from Bridget Gaynor's office. Katie Sable from Commissioner Bridget Gaynor's office. James Papachen, uh, <coughs> Cook County Commissioner Larry Sufferton. Rudy Yuri, Commissioner Evan Wade. Rudy. Rudy Urian. I never call him anything but Rudy. <laughs> Who is from Commissioner Reyes' office? Teresa McKelvey from Commissioner Collins' office. Teresa, your last name? McKelvey. McKelvey. From Commissioner Early and Collins' office. What do you see your last name? McKelvey. McKelvey. Thank you. Will Brown, Director of Veterans Affairs for Veterans Will Brown, Director of Veterans Affairs. Other staff we missed? Again, I want to thank all of you, um, our residents and citizens, for coming out tonight and for your interest in this process. We'd be grateful for any additional thoughts or comments you have um, on our budget. <coughs> Andrea, where do you want those comments directed? To me? Yes. Yeah, it's it's website. Website. To me, I think a lot of you know me. All right, the budget website is cookcountyil.gov slash 2013 budget. 2013 budget, right? cookcountyil.gov slash 2013 budget. All right, thank you all.